In this video, we're going to be talking about how to break church growth barriers, and I'm even going to give you the growth secrets from a church that has 60,000 members coming up. Hey, what's up? Welcome back, guys. Chris Abbott here. In this video, we're going to be talking about church growth and specifically how to break through the church growth barriers that all of us are trying to break through, right? So whether that barrier is 100, 200, 500, 1,000, or even more, everyone has a church growth barrier. And the bottom line is we have to do something different if we want to break through that barrier, right? So what got you here won't get you there. So let's dive in and talk about some of the principles you can use to break through those church growth barriers. Okay, so there's a pastor down in Honduras that, no joke, has 60,000 people in his church, right? And so when asked one time, hey, how did you grow the church to 60,000 people? I mean, that's crazy, right? Like, how many people in the world can say they have a 60,000 member church? Well, the pastor thought for a moment and he said, you know, we used to have 500 people. And we would do everything that we could to grow. Like we would, you know, knock on doors and we'd hand out invite cards and, and we'd go out and we'd, we'd witness to people and we'd invite them into church. And he said, and it would work for a while, right? We'd go from 500, 600, 700, 800, and then something would happen and we'd fall back to 500, right? And so then we would do it again. We'd start knocking on more doors and we'd go out and we'd hand out more invite cards, right? And we'd grow again from 500, 600, 700, and then we'd fall back to 500, right? And so what's interesting is he said what changed the game for us when we finally begin to grow was when I got on my knees and I said, God, there are plenty of pastors that you've called to a 500 member church, but I'm not one of them. I'm called to reach this nation. And he said, when he finally drew a line in the sand and he made a decision that he was going to figure it out because he wasn't the pastor of a 500 member church, but he was called to reach tens of thousands, that's when the church began to grow. So this is a really important principle. Notice it wasn't when he found the right Facebook ad to run. It wasn't when he found just the right message to put on his invite card or when he went out there and ran a direct mail piece or knocked on 10,000 doors. He began to grow when he made a decision to grow. And a lot of this comes down to belief, right? You have to believe that you are called to something bigger. You have to believe that you can handle the growth when it comes before you can ever do it. There's a difference between wanting a thing and being ready to receive it. It wasn't until this pastor was ready to receive it that his church actually began to grow. Let's dive into three principles that can help you break through your current church growth barrier, no matter how big your church is. All right, number one, this is called the law of the lid. Now, the law of the lid says that leadership ability is the lid that determines a person's effectiveness. So the lower a person's ability to lead, the lower his potential. And vice versa, the higher their ability to lead, the higher their potential is. So for example, if your leadership is at an eight, your effectiveness can never be higher than a seven because the lid on your leadership is an eight, right? If your leadership is a 15, you can never be more effective than a 14. And if your leadership ability is only at a four, your effectiveness can never be past a three. So the law of the lid says we have to constantly work on ourselves. We have to constantly be learning and constantly be growing and growing ourselves in order to grow our church. So no matter what the problem is in your church right now, the problem is actually not your church. The problem isn't your people. The problem isn't that your congregation doesn't invite. The problem is you. And that's great news, right? Because if, if the problem is your congregation that people won't invite, there's nothing we can do about that. But if the problem is us, there's something we can. Every single organization, the bottleneck is always on the leader. So you as a leader need to be honest about where you're at and where the lid is in your leadership. And then you need to attack everything in your life until you break through that lid and grow your leadership ability so you can grow your church. Okay, number two, the law of buy-in. The law of buy-in says that people will buy into the leader before they ever buy into your vision. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So if you wanna create a movement and you wanna break through your current growth barrier, then what you need to do is you need to tell stories that connect with people. You need to demonstrate your values and who you are as a person and as a leader, and you'll attract those types of people to you because they're gonna buy into you before they buy into the vision, right? People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So if you were to tell a story about a time that you took the entire day off and let your kids skip school just to take them to the zoo because you 
you've been working so much and things have been so crazy that you realize you've been neglecting your family. And then you tell this incredible story about the day you guys had at the zoo and how much your kids loved it and how they ate cotton candy until they were sick to their stomachs and you tickled your daughter until she peed, right? That's a great way to connect with other parents, right? Because every single parent has experienced things like that. So by sharing those types of stories, you're actually sharing your values. You're sharing that you're a person of character and integrity, right? You value family over work and all these other things. And so without having to say any of those things, simply by telling that story, you're going to attract other parents and people who have those same values and you're going to attract them to you. So they're not buying into your vision for church growth or anything else. They're buying into you as a leader. Okay. So before I get to my last point, I want to hear from you, right? Why is it that you got into ministry? right? Why is it that you do what you do? There's a lot of different places that you could work, a lot of different things that you could do, but you chose one of the hardest things on the face of the planet. And I want to know why. So put your why down in the comments. I promise to read every one. And finally, number three, the law of the rubber band. Now this says that growth stops when you lose the tension between where you are and where you want to be. Right? So when we start to get comfortable and we just start to accept where we're at, that law, that rubber band, that stretching between where you are and where you want to be, that tension loosens and, and our vision stops pulling us forward. Right? So this is exactly what happened to the pastor in Honduras when he finally just said, God, thank you for where I'm at. There's a lot of people that would be happy here, but I'm not called here. I'm called there. Right? The tension between being at 500 people and knowing he was supposed to pastor tens of thousands, right? that's what pulled him forward. But if he were to just settle in and say, you know, and 500 people is actually a lot of people. In fact, there's not too many churches in the entire world that have 500 people. I should just be grateful and thankful and I'm just going to focus on them, right? That's the law of the rubber band. And when you lose the tension between where you are and where you want to be, you stop growing. So I actually had a chance to work with a church here a couple of years ago that did this, right? So Pastor West called me up because they were moving from one building to another. And those of you guys who have planted churches, you know how tough that can be. Most of the time you lose half your people when you move from one building to another as a church church plant, right? And so they were running about 350 people at the time. They're about five years old. And then he hired me to help him run Facebook ads and get the word out about the grand opening they're having in this new building. And this was a perfect illustration of the law of the rubber band because Pastor Wes knew that he wasn't called to just reach the people in his church and he wasn't okay with losing half his people like most church plants would do when they moved buildings. So instead he went all in and he ended up growing his church from 350 to 800 in only four weeks. So literally every single week, people just kept pouring in the front door. And when they had the grand opening in the brand new building, four weeks later, instead of 350 people, over 800 people showed up. He doubled his church in only a month because he knew that where he was, wasn't where he was going. Okay, so if you wanna learn a little bit more about how to break through your current church growth barrier, just go over to churchgrowthagency.com. We have a free training video where we can walk you through our process for exactly how we've helped hundreds of churches over the last 18 months to generate over 58,000 prayer requests and over 6,000 new families that have planned a visit to their church. Hey, hey.